So now let's look at cellular injury. When the stress on a cell becomes too much for it to handle, it leads to cellular injury. Okay. Now this can happen for a variety of different reasons such as hypoxia, ischemia, genetic mutation, trauma or inflammation. Now cellular injury can either be reversible or irreversible depending on how severe the stress is and how long it lasts. At first the injury is usually reversible but if the stress continues it becomes irreversible. Let's start with reversible injury. Now the most noticeable sign of this is cellular swelling. Now why does this happen? It's all about the sodium potassium pump. Now this pump will stop working, ions will start building up inside the cell and water will follow causing the cell to swell. Now this swelling leads to several changes. First of all the ribosomes will detach from the endoplasmic reticulum, the cell microvilli will be lost and the cell membrane will form small protrusions like these called uh, blebs, membrane blebs. Okay? While these changes sound alarming, they are not permanent and if the stress is removed in time, the cell can go back to normal. However, if the stress continues, we move into the irreversible cellular injury territory. Now the hallmark here is cell membrane damage. Okay? What happens is that when the cell membrane gets damaged, enzymes start leaking out calcium starts getting in inside the cell okay and calcium inside the cell is not a good thing what happens is that it starts getting into the mitochondria inside the mitochondria where it will form amorphous densities damaging the mitochondria on top of that what it does is that it starts activating enzymes such as phospholipids proteases and nucleases all of which will start uh, dissolving the cells phospholipids proteins and the nucleus now these enzymes will even start uh, attacking the cells nucleus and will degrade the nucleus in three steps first is pycnosis where the nucleus starts condensing okay uh, second is karyorrhexis where the nucleus starts fragmenting and karyolysis in which the nucleus completely dissolves now at this point the damage is beyond repair and the cell moves forward towards cell death. Now here in this diagram we can see the multiple steps from a normal cell uh, going through reversible injury and then irreversible injury and cell death. Okay, So in the reversible injury we can see the membrane blebbing, cellular swelling, mitochondrial swelling, ribosomal detachment, ER swelling and nuclear chromatin clumping. Okay, But when it goes into irreversible um, injury what happens is that the, there are many nuclear changes as we discussed, liposomal rupture, phospholipid membrane damage and increased mitochondrial permeability, all of which is going to lead to cell death. Okay. Now let's look at cell death. Now as we discussed, first the cell tries to adapt, then it goes into the reversible injury territory, then it goes into the irreversible injury territory and then into cell death which can either be through necrosis or apoptosis. First we'll discuss necrosis or accidental or uncontrolled cell death. What happens is, is that in necrosis it results in swelling of the cell organelles, plasma membrane and eventual lysis of the cell. There are many different types of necrosis. Coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, caseous necrosis, fat necrosis, fibrinoid necrosis and gangrenous necrosis. We'll look at each uh, type in detail. Okay. Now coagulative necrosis. This one is the most common and usually occurs in solid organs like the heart, kidneys and liver. Basically anywhere except the brain. It happens because of ischemia that is lack of blood supply and results in denature, denaturing of the proteins. Okay. The affected tissue retains its shape and structure for a while now and giving it a tombstone appearance as if the cells are still there but they're dead okay so this is an um, image showing the uh, coagulative necrosis in the liver okay next we'll see liquefactive necrosis now this is seen in tissues that are rich in enzymes such as the brain and the pancreas in this type the tissue turns into a liquid mass 
due to the digestion of the cells by their own enzymes okay so in the brain for example it's caused by often caused by strokes or infections and creates a soft uh, liquid like area okay next is caseous necrosis now you have to think of this as a cheese like uh, appearance that's what it looks like under the microscope it's most commonly associated with tb and certain fungal infections the tissue appears soft and crumbly due to the combination of coagulative and liquefactive necrosis and we can see this here in this diagram next is fat necrosis this type uh, is specific to fat rich tissues like the breast or the pancreas it happens when lipases break down fat leading to the release of fatty acids now these fatty acids then combine with calcium forming white chalky deposits it's often seen in acute pancreatitis or after trauma to fatty tissues okay next is fibrinoid necrosis now this occurs in blood vessels and is associated with immune reactions such as in autoimmune diseases under the microscope they affect vessels and they show a pink fibrin like appearance because of the deposition of immune complexes and fibrin as can be seen in this image lastly we have gangrenous necrosis now this isn't a distinct type but a clinical term okay it occurs when large areas of tissue die and often due to ischemia there are two types dry gangrene and wet gangrene dry gangrene results from coagulative necrosis and appears black and shriveled often seen in conditions like diabetes or frostbite on the other hand wet gangrene involves liquefactive necrosis usually because of infection and appears swollen and oozing lastly we we'll look at apoptosis now in comparison to the necrosis this is a graceful way for the cell to die meaning that the cell is going to program or plan its own death this is an atp dependent process and it is not associated with inflammation it is mediated by the caspase enzymes which activate proteases and endonucleases both of which will break down the cell cytoskeleton and the dna respectively that's all for today see you in the next one